Brian Johnson is an American entrepreneur and venture capitalist who sold his company Braintree to PayPal for $800 million. At the age of 43, Brian started what he calls Project Blueprint with the goal of reversing his biological age as much as possible to 18 even. After almost two years, Brian has worked with over 30 doctors and medical professionals to reverse his epigenetic age by 5.1 years, slow his speed of aging by 24% and achieve over 50 perfect biomarkers that are lower than his chronological age. All of this has costed him up to $2 million per year on different supplements, cutting-edge medical interventions, and accurate measurement of hundreds of biomarkers. I've already made a thorough review of his daily routine and food regimen last year, so you can check it out for more information. But in this video, I'm gonna go through again his Blueprint protocol and current results. Do it! My objective with Blueprint is to demonstrate aging escape velocity using the best science trying to do all the appropriate interventions to neutralize my aging process. So I think the perfect place to start is to just check out his uh, protocol and uh, we, you can check it out yourself at blueprint.brianjohnson.co. Now, first off the bat, I have to say that you know, it's still very amazing in terms of what he has accomplished. When you look at the before and after photos of him, then yeah, he definitely looks a lot uh, younger than he was before. You can be play the devil's advocate in terms of that. He just got fit. He just lost weight. He just got leaner. He just, uh, yeah, achieved this um, like difference because he just got fitter. Of course, you know, he looked like an average 45 year old, in my opinion, before. He wasn't like overweight or obese. He was probably a little bit like excess body fat for sure. But now, he's definitely very lean and uh, much you know in a better health but person i do think that he has you know actually reversed his age from the, like a epigenetic level because he has actually just measured all of these different biomarkers he has taken all these tests that uh, do show the age reversal based on like the average obviously he's comparing himself to the you know someone who is uh, normally 35 year old or 18 year old for example but the problem with that is that you know the average 35 year old already is pretty in pretty bad shape and pretty bad health it doesn't actually know what whether or not it actually means anything it just means that he's super fit for his age he's fitter than 99.9% .9 of someone else who is 45 years old and he's probably fitter than 99% of someone else who is 35 years old from compared to 18 year olds then he's still very fit uh, is he like younger biologically than someone who is 18 years old or 20 years old we don't know that but we know that he just he just um, you know com compared to those individuals in that same age group he's doing a lot better than a lot of these other individuals it's really a stacked process of maybe a hundred different things I do because you have to think about the the body in its entirety now personally i have also done epigenetic age tests i have measured my dna methylation clock which is the horvath's clock that is kind of considered the gold standard in terms of measuring biological age and when i was 25 years old which was like two years ago i did the test and it showed that my biological age was uh, 16 which was uh, nine years uh, younger i haven't retested the uh, horvath's clock right now but i'm going to do it in a few weeks and we'll see what has like changed over the course of two years but regardless i think what uh, brian johnson is doing is amazing like yeah there's literally no one else who is doing such like rigorous actual experimentation and the testing of the things that he's doing and like he said yeah like he's not saying that this is what works this is the he, he says like this is the data based on him and uh, this is what has worked for him especially so obviously there may be some individual differences but the framework and the main pr principles that he follows are still applicable to pretty much everyone i uh, based on like my own understanding and looking at the protocol having gone through the protocol you know last year myself in terms of looking at how it works uh, i must say that yeah i think everything that he's doing is working and everything that he's doing is pretty much you know backed up by some science because he's doing so many things all at once we don't necessarily know like what is the biggest lever in terms of what is giving the biggest results and some of the things that he's doing might not work at all and we don't know that specifically we know that all these things together apparently have reversed his biological age but we don't know necessarily like what is this exact thing that is working what is this exact thing that is giving the 80 percent of the results so here is a glimpse of his uh, blueprint basically he eats uh, about 1900 calories per day which is uh, approximately 24 or 25 percent calorie restriction he's primarily vegan or 100 percent vegan except he has said that he the only like animal product he's taking is collagen peptides uh, for the probably the skin and joint benefits 
uh, 70 plus pounds of veggies a month. So eat a lot of vegetables, nuts and uh, seeds and uh, kind of yeah, plant-based foods, beans and stuff, 100 plus pills per day. He measures blood, stool, saliva, urine, MRI, ultrasound, etc. In the morning, he's taking uh, Green Giant, which is kind of this uh, first breakfast plus 50 four uh, pills, then one hour workout, super veggie, which is another meal, skin, oral, hair, eye, care, routine, travel to work, nutty pudding, and uh, third dish, which is 34 pills. So the first thing that he consumes upon waking is the green giant, eight, eight ounces of water, spermidine, two tablespoons of chlora powder, which gives about 13.5 milligrams of spermidine, which is good because uh, according to um, studies, then uh, people who get over 11 milligrams of spermidine a day have uh, the lowest risk of mortality and people who get less than 11 milligrams of spermidine have a higher risk of mortality So yeah, definitely I'm a huge fan of uh, spermidine as a supplement or from foods the highest sources of spermidine from food is uh, aged cheese uh, chlorella and uh, mushrooms generally Amino complex 7.6 grams. So probably some amino acid powder creatine 2.5 grams, which is a good dose even like 3 grams uh, on a vegan diet He probably would even benefit from 3 to 5 grams uh, probably uh, collagen peptides, 20 grams. So yeah, like this is the only animal product that he's taking. Uh, I would guess that it's probably like a marine collagen, I guess. Um, Coca flavanols, which actually also has been linked to reduce the heart disease mortality as well. These are called cocoa polyphenols because they're very high in polyphenols and powerful like antioxidants. Salem cinnamon, which is very good for insulin sensitivity and the morning pills, the 54 <laughs> pills in the morning. Then he works out for one hour, does different kinds of exercises. Super veggie, which is kind of the actual breakfast, which um, is pretty much like blended together. He eats it like in a blended form. Um, but uh, yeah, you can obviously maybe eat it like this. So black lentils, 300 grams, weight cooked, broccoli, 250 grams, cauliflower, 150 grams, shiitake or maitake mushrooms, 50 grams, one glove of uh, garlic, <coughs> ginger root, three grams, lime, one cumin, one tablespoon, apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon, hemp seeds, one tablespoon, and after prep, drizzle one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. So yeah, I think extra virgin olive oil is very good for very, it's also very high in polyphenols and very good for cardiovascular disease prevention. And uh, these autophagy regulating polyphenols are obviously very anti-aging as well. Nutty pudding, so 500 to 100 milligrams of almond milk, three, three tablespoons of ground macadamia nuts, two teaspoons of ground walnuts, one teaspoon of ground flaxseed, a half Brazil nut, one tablespoon of non dutched uh, cacao, one teaspoon of sunflower lecithin, a half teaspoon of saline cinnamon, one cup of blueberries, raspberry, strawberries, three cherries, two ounces of freshly squeezed pomegranate juice. And the last third meals are different kinds of yeah, plant-based uh, meals, about 500 calories each. Beets, asparagus, almonds, arugula, shallots, balsamic, uh, Dijon, mustard seeds, which uh, yeah, actually help with glutathione. So combining these uh, you know, mustards with the cruciferous actually kind of enhances the sulforaphane. Uh, orange fennel salad, orange fennel, goji berries, pecans, grape tomatoes, yeah, different kinds of uh, kind of plant-based meals. And last, stuffed sweet potato, 500 calories. Again, sweet potato, chickpeas, grape, tomatoes, avocado, radishes, cilantro, limes, lemon, jalapeno, etc. Fun fact, on Blueprint, you'll eat over 70 pounds of veggies, berries, nuts per month. And uh, he obviously also blends it together, so it makes it a lot easier to consume. And I do believe that, yeah, just eating more <laughs> vegetables and plant-based food will have a positive effect on your health. So... Because first of all, the plants and vegetables are very low in calories, so it's very hard to overeat and it's also easier to adhere to a calorie restriction. So Brian Johnson has said it that calorie restriction is also one of the biggest levers or, or the levers that improves his biological age and slows it down, which I also agree with. Calorie restriction, at least in virtually all species, has been found to benefit aging and slow down aging and even reverse aging in many ways. So calorie restriction works through many mechanisms. It increases autophagy that clears the body from senescent cells and just, you know, this uh, dysfunctional mitochondria. Uh, but also calorie restriction increases NAD levels, which obviously is used for virtually everything. You have more energy, your body has more powerful, you know, defense measures against all oxidative stress and sun damage and all those things if you have higher NAD levels. Calorie restriction also reduces inflammation. Calorie restriction activates glutathione or increases glutathione and superoxide dismutase. So yeah, calorie restriction pretty much slows down aging. Uh, and, uh, you know, putting it halt stop is very hard. You have to be on a calorie restriction for a very long time. And you also obviously have to 
consider the other aspects related to aging, like muscle fitness, muscle strength, uh, cardiovascular function, etc., which uh, Brian Johnson is doing. He is exercising every day for one hour. So yeah, like if you look at it, then the biggest things or the biggest contributors to his anti-aging routine are what number one, the calorie restriction, the 25% calorie restriction, which is quite severe, and uh, exercise are the biggest two levers in terms of the you know the age reversal in terms of the aesthetic looks of the body like you reduce the fat around the face around the organs etc but you also improve the muscle tone muscle fitness that makes your just body look uh, younger from the actual like epigenetic and biological side then the third pillar to this is uh, sleep so sleep is when most of these anti-aging processes occur like your body is you know, increasing melatonin when you're sleeping that has very powerful antioxidant effects. Your body is regenerating NAD in your sleep. Your body is conducting autophagy in your sleep and brain detoxification in your sleep. So all the magic happens in your sleep. <laughs> you kind of have to think of it in a way that during the daytime, you uh, like install different programs, etc. Or you like you tell your, if you look at a, like a computer, you put these different messages, information into your like Word document or program, but at night when you're sleeping is where the saving and where the kind of installing of the program occurs. So like you, you install an update during the daytime, but the actual update is like processed and put into the system when you're sleeping. And that's how I look at it, at least. From a diet side, I do agree again that uh, more like a plant-based eating has a more positive effect on the uh, aging and longevity based on the studies and like different mechanisms as well because you know if you look at the mechanisms not only like the epidemiology which does favor more plant-based eating from a mechanistic side then yeah like suppressing mTOR limiting that increasing autophagy then that does also favor somewhat of a more plant-based intake because these plant polyphenols they're obviously very potent in activating autophagy and having these antioxidant benefits on your system as well but they also like keep the mTOR activation lower which I do think that at the root of, you know, like at the root cause of the issue, then mTOR, excess mTOR activation at least, does have like a negative effect on aging. Like there is some controversy about that in terms that, you know, you also need some mTOR for building muscle and maintaining muscle. Uh, but at the root of it, I do think that like excess mTOR activation is still kind of what is one of the main reasons why we age. Do you need to be like 100% plant-based? I don't think so. Like you probably can get away with like, you know, maybe 80% plant-based, 20% animal-based or something like that, and it would be virtually the same as being 100% plant-based. So that's what I think, personally. But 100% animal-based probably kind of leans on the other direction uh, from an epi epigenetic uh, aging side. You can also mimic this with different means, like you need to restrict methionine and you need to restrict mTOR activation, which uh, both of uh, will increase the speed of aging. And you can mimic methionine restriction by yeah eating more like these uh, lower methionine plant-based proteins as well as taking glycine so glycine actually has been found to mimic methionine restriction without restricting methionine so yeah you need to increase your glycine which you get from collagen and more like plant-based foods but also like you know skin uh, tendons ligaments and those kind of things and not just muscle meat so excess muscle meat probably does have like a negative effect on aging because yeah excess methionine will raise your homocysteine and uh, also increases mTOR and IGF-1 levels, which both in excess will uh, or are linked to aging. And also time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting is also like a very powerful way to uh, suppress mTOR. And uh, based on my like lifestyle and based on my understanding of the science, then yeah, like time-restricted eating can actually give you very similar effects in terms of like the methionine and mTOR activation even if you're eating like a higher animal protein intake, uh, because you know with mTOR you can only pulse it so high in a given time frame, and if you eat only like once or twice a day, then it doesn't matter that you do like eat something that has more methionine, for example. But overall, I do think that yeah, like a more plant-based intake generally is uh, better, and uh, you do want to like make sure that you don't get excess methionine. You want to balance it with glycine. And doing some form of time restricted eating is like the cherry on top in terms of making sure that you do suppress mTOR because fasting, being in a fasted state, is the most powerful way to suppress mTOR besides taking like rapamycin or something like that. So here are the supplements that he's taking, which is uh, quite a lot. Upon waking, a carbose, which is like a diabetic supplement, helps to like clear the bloodstream or you absorb less glucose basically, which is a prescription supplement. Ashwagandha. B complex, Brocomax, which I guess would be some sulforaphane booster, vitamin C, clocofavanols, 
D3, DHEA, which uh, is a testosterone precursor, uh, vitamin E, EPA, garlic, ginger root, glucosamine, sulfate, iodine, lithium, which actually <laughs> we also found uh, from uh, one of my previous videos that yeah, lithium use is also linked to uh, lower mortality from the brain side, especially lycopene, lysine, methformin, again, prescription drug, nicotinamide riboside, NAC, turmeric, taurine, ubiquinol, which is a, a mitochondrial supplement, zeaxanthin, and zinc are the supplements that he's taking upon waking. So, uh, you know, I do think that using metformin and these glucose, you know, disposal agents or like more like prescription uh, diabetic drugs, in some ways, they can definitely have a very positive effect on aging because they suppress mTOR and they reduce your blood sugar levels, they improve your lipid profile, all those things. Um, and uh, yeah, they do have many, you know, anti-aging effects, but, um, you know, they also have like some negative side effects in terms of, you know, actually having a negative effect on like your anabolism, etc. You won't be able to build that much muscle and it's going to may potentially have like a negative effect on your Mm, like exercise performance as well but obviously you know Brian Johnson he doesn't have a problem with that because he's over exercising or he's exercising so much that it probably compensates for the use of these uh, diabetic uh, drugs in my opinion he's not taking uh, rapamycin at least that's what I'm not seeing here um, so I think rapamycin is much more powerful than metformin and uh, rapamycin probably has more side effects as well because it's uh, immunosuppressant so taking metformin probably like every once in a while is fine like you take it i wouldn't take it per every day as a normal person if you don't have actually like diabetes and your biomarkers are perfect then you don't need to take metformin every day i think and the same applies to this uh, carbose uh, if you are interested in doing something like that then i would maybe use like berberine um as a, because met berberine is actually referred to as like a natural metformin which has pretty much the same effects as metformin but it's like a, a degree lighter it's not as severe in terms of the effects and it has negative or less uh, side effects as well so uh yeah i think i think him who is like just com completely committed to this anti-aging protocol for him it makes sense to yeah take metformin just in case almost <laughs> just in case to make sure that it uh actually do has these desired effects but as a like a normal person who might be watching this then i don't think that you need to take metformin necessarily at least like not every day. Uh, with dinner, again, a carbose, brocomax, vitamin C, cocoflaminols, EPA, garlic, ginger root, glucosamine, uh, sulfate, hyaluronic acid, lysine, tyrosine, metformin again, NAC, nicotinamide riboside, turmeric. So that's interesting. He's taking, uh, oh, he's actually, he is taking uh, rapamycin as well, bi-weekly. So uh, yeah, that makes sense um, to take uh, the rapamycin, not every day for sure, uh, but every once in a while is probably uh, more worth it. Uh, but yeah, he's taking rep uh, metformin for dinner as well, which is gives him two grams of metformin uh, per day, which is uh, quite a lot. I'm not sure if it's kind of needed to do that much. Um, so because he's already like super lean, he's already exercising a lot. So I don't, he's kind of overkill in my opinion, probably um, because his blood sugar levels are probably like super low already. And uh, like suppressing mTOR all the time chronically is probably not the most ideal uh, in my opinion. But yeah, all the other supplements I do think are kind of worth it to take, especially, you know, the, let's say the cocoflavonols or um, EPA or garlic. Those are like very easy uh, wins for uh, even like a normal person to add into their routine. Before bed, 300 micrograms of melatonin, which uh, I do think is a good idea to help with the kind of rejuvenative anti-aging processes that occur in your sleep. Other supplements, so extra virgin olive oil, 30 milligrams or 30 milliliters a day. Pea protein, 29 grams a day to increase the protein intake probably. Dark chocolate, 15 grams. Rapamycin, 13 milligrams bi-weekly. So yeah, like every other week, I guess. And um, I wonder if it's taking like every day of the week, every, every other week, or uh, just once a week, every other week. That would be interesting to know. Testosterone, uh, so two milligram patch, six times a week. And uh, yeah, it's he's taking TRT basically to uh, raise his testosterone levels. And in one of his like videos that he made with his doctor, he did talk that uh, the calorie restriction that he started tanked his testosterone and his testosterone levels were that of a 70 year old, which is yeah, obviously, you know, the opposite of what he wants and the opposite of what he claims in his uh, protocol. And he did add the TRT to bring his testosterone to normal levels. And uh, yeah, I think that's a big, that this is also a very like a big confounding variable. You know, you 
I, I, and first of all, I do think it's actually a good idea to take TRT in your like 50s or 40s uh, or 60s or 70s, especially. Um, but it does, you know, I'm not against it. I'm, I think it's a good idea for sure. And I would, you know, do anything in terms of the supplementation to like reverse the biological age clock. But, you know, probably the average person doesn't have access uh, to that unless they actually have a medical condition of uh, low uh, testosterone levels. Overall, I do think that uh, what Brian Johnson is doing is amazing because, yeah, no one else has measured <laughs> so many things. No one else has, like, invested so much time and money and effort into this probably than him. He's one of the first ones to, like, document this uh, entirely and it's very exciting to see, like, what happens, you know, next, where you, how far he's gonna take it. Uh, there are people who are, like, criticizing him slightly for, you know, the money invested into this. They say that, okay, if you if you spend $2 million per year on this, why don't you spend that money on actually conducting research? Like, why don't you invest that money in, like, some other stem cell research or this NAD research or whatever, color restriction research, etc.? Yes, that's a valid point. But I think it's more, you know, first of all, it's his money. He, he can do what he wants with it. And it's also his body. Like, you know, if he invests it into research, it's going to take, you know, decades probably even for us to actually get any applicable, like, let's say, information from that that you can implement. So he wants to reverse his age right now. So that's why he's doing it right now with his own body. He's investing all the money into his own body in that sense. So I think it's, you know, yeah, it's very good that he's doing it at least on himself because even he's doing it on himself we get a lot of you know things based on or we get a lot of like results we know some of a little bit in terms of what is the possible in terms of age reversal of course there's the caveat that we don't know exactly what is the thing that is giving him the 80 percent of the results he's probably doing a lot of things that are unnecessary we don't know which ones are the unnecessary part we know that at least the vast majority of results that you can do especially is to you know obviously clean up your diet exercise regularly a lot get good sleep um, and probably increase like your uh, fruits and vegetable and plant-based intake that's probably like the biggest takeaway for the average person that they can take of course there is also like a few of these supplements but i don't think that there's any supplement that gives you like the 80 percent of the results maybe like metformin or um, rapamycin for a diabetic could give like 80 percent of the results for them but uh, like you still have to implement the fundamentals which are the like you know exercise good diet calorie restriction i think is very huge maybe time restricted eating getting good sleep and uh, being like a more you know balanced uh, diet in terms of the plant-based intake do you need to invest two million dollars per year into this probably not like i would imagine that the vast majority of this cost is spent on like the doctors like he has 30 doctors Obviously, those doctors don't work for free. <laughs> they also need to get their salaries. Uh, all these medical tests aren't free. He has to take all these tests, take all these measurements. Um, and yeah, that's probably the vast majority of this money is going to. Like the actual supplements, the actual foods. I would imagine you can yeah spend maybe like a few hundred or maybe like a thousand dollars per month for all these supplements and all this food and all this exercise. Um, and the extra would be on like the actual medical like uh, advisors, medical, you know, tests and all those things. In conclusion, what Brian Johnson is doing is great. I think it's amazing. Um, he's definitely reversing his biological age and uh, we're getting a lot of like valuable data from that. It's just that, yeah, we need to actually know what to do with all this data now. And we definitely need more people to like replicate it and uh, you know, use it to actually conduct uh, actual like, clinical uh, research. If you are interested in slowing down aging and reversing your biological clock, then I am looking for more people to go through my process and my routine. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.